Hi, I'm Lisa Keller. I'm a certified sex addiction therapist here in Tucson, Arizona. I'm also a Christian counselor, and what I mean by that is the counseling that I do is clinical, but also biblically based counseling. Um, I work with couples and individuals in um, porn addiction, sex addiction, and uh, infidelity. Um, I also do just general biblical Christian counseling for couples and individuals. So how I approach counseling in my sessions. So first of all, um, the way that I um, always um, attempt to approach it is first, I am praying, I'm praying that the Lord is speaking to me, that I am for the marriage, that I'm um, for each person individually in their walk with God and that's where we start. And then it's a case by case basis, but it is really about um, helping the husband. I, I prefer to work with both of the individuals and then the couple together. So it, with the couple, it's um, helping, first of all, do crisis management. So that's what we would do. It's not really couples therapy at the beginning. It's more crisis management. And then for the wife, it would be um, helping her to navigate through the pain and have healthy interactions and communication during this time when it can be really difficult. And for the husband is to help him come out of denial and look at all aspects of it and the minimization, the justification and all that's gone on there, as well as um, if he hasn't um, true empathy, developing empathy. Okay, so for the first thing that I'm going to talk to, I'm going to talk to husbands and um, those husbands that are currently acting out either with pornography or some sort of infidelity, um, chat rooms, emotional acting out. And so um, if you have not disclosed to your wife your acting out behavior, um, my first recommendation would be that you seek some counsel first before you uh, disclose to your wife because the hardest thing for wives is to hear partial disclosure. So um, they hear you tell them part of the story and then they say they think that's all of it and then you um, a week later tell them a little more of the story. And so what that, what that does is it, it adds to how I um, view the wives um, in, in a, like a traumatic response. And so it is, is much better to get your, your story together if, if you can work with somebody that has experience um, in this that can help you actually uh, write out your full disclosure and how it should be said and then, then walk that process through you. That can be really helpful for your wife. Um, and if you would view this, you might interpret this different in, in terms of how you would feel if your wife disclosed something like this to you. However, when this is disclosed to, the, to your wife, she is going to feel um, betrayed, um, um, she's going to feel like her world has changed um, and actually the bo her body will go into a traumatic response and she will become hypervigilant and so she really needs um, time, patient, needs you to pray for her and, um, and get, seek some help on um, empathy for her at this time. So another thing that is critical for the husbands to um, do for the wives in order to, to move past, if we're looking at restoration of the marriage, another important piece is uh, acknowledging your wife's pain. Whether or not you would interpret it in the same way is really um, not what um, is you know, important at, at this point. It's really that your acknowledgement goes so far for your wife. So that really is going to be necessary before restoration can take place. So, and, and that's not like a one time, like I'm sorry and I really feel bad about this. That continues. And if you can trust, trust that God's going to work in that area, that over time your wife won't need as much of that. But be patient and be humble. Um, humility goes such a, a long way for the spouse in um, acknowledging her pain. And so for wives, um, first thing that I um, want to do is I want to acknowledge your pain. I think sometimes in the Christian circles, um, we're quickly told that we, to be a godly wife, we need to quickly forgive, move on. And, um, and so I think there's a part of that that feels um, unvalidating, I guess I can say. And so, um, 
you know, if it was if it was so easy to just move on, we would, you know, we would be Jesus. It's not so easy. And so I just want to validate that for you, that um, this is going to take some time and that it's going to be a grieving process. And especially depending on what it was, how you heard it, how you learned it. And so um, to take that time, if you've decided that um, you're fighting for your marriage and, and, and maybe you haven't decided that you're fighting for your marriage and you don't know what it looks like to hold on to this pain um, is definitely going to get in the way of your relationship with Jesus. And so um, to be able to work through it and then um, see where God guides you um, is really important. But having that um, acknowledgement that you're not crazy, that you um, not knowing what to do with all these feelings. It would be normal to want to be searching, searching for information, more information, and we would call that pain shopping. And so um, getting good support for you is really important. What I see is if marriages, um, if there's a desire to restore the marriage, that it is very difficult if the wife um, doesn't also get support.